Henry Grant's garden is gone. Only the sign remains, bearing silent testimony to its location. Yet his legacy lives on, as others find fascination with the Bitterroot. People like Dorothy Staggs. I think about him, Henry Grant, all the time when I'm out here working. Dorothy's devotion to the plants meant that when they were threatened, she would have to move them out of harm's way. The grader was going to come and take them out, so I, I dug them up. I know I've transplanted way over four or 5,000 of them. I like having them in the wild, as long as they're not going to be graded up and lost. She discovered something the Native Americans already knew. If you detach the root, you can plant the root, you can plant the crown, and you can get a plant from the crown and from the root. The crown, or caudex, as scientists refer to it, has a reddish center, known by the Native Americans as the heart. The heart, I think that also very much signifies that strength and the heart of the Salish and the heart of the Bitterroot. That's basically the message I grew up with coming from my mother and that's what I believe and I'm trying to pass it on to my children. And in terms of looking at the concerns some people have about whether we're running out of Bitterroot or if it's going extinct or is it endangered or whatever, in terms of biological, um, I think that the Bitterroot is okay. Now, if we have a lot of development, like in the Missoula area, that's going to take it out. Children at an elementary school in Missoula, Montana, are working to improve the situation. And what we're going to do with these is not just enjoy the flowers and talk about them, but we're going to collect the seeds from these bitter roots, and then we can plant more bitter roots in places like Mount Sentinel and Mount Jumbo. Uh -oh. There used to be lots and lots of bitter roots all over the floor of the Missoula Valley, and it was uh, quite common for people to come here and dig them because people would eat the roots. People still do eat the roots. So it's important that we have a place where people can come and see them. So it's harder and harder to find the bitter roots these days. Eventually, the Salish purchased the private land in Camas Prairie, where they had been going to gather the bitterroots. However, the thought of actually cultivating the plant brings up worrisome issues for the tribe. The elders, they don't approve of cultivation of native plants at this point. When does a native plant not become native anymore? How many steps does it take from collecting the seed to propagation and then manipulating the genes where does that native plant stop becoming native? And so I see that from the beginning for the elders that they try to forestall that step, the first step of taking it and putting the plant on that road to where it may not be native in a, a sense, maybe even far more than just a cultural sense, but maybe even in a biological sense. This has been more than a story about a root and a flower, but a story about people and their relationship to the world, a relationship that is both simple and profound. I just pray, I just hope that somewhere in our time, our next generation or so, that the young people can all look at one another as one heart, even though they're all different colors or different ways of praying, different ways of eating or whatever it might be, that they all look at one another as good people, as one people, and that's the hopes and my wishes and prayers for everything. <laughs>